So this is where we're going to cover the types of end-to-end -end testing and just want you to know we are monitoring questions and there was a question on what are the types of end-to-end -end testing. And so time to get into that. So for horizontal end-to-end -end testing, um, in order to do horizontal testing, you need your test environments um, for all of your systems to be set up in advance. For horizontal testing, you're going to be looking at verifying each workflow through each individual app. You're going to look at the workflow from start to finish. You're going to ensure that the process, process occurs correctly. And tests can be done in a single application or interface or interaction with an external application or third party vendors. So this is pretty interesting because you're focusing um, on the test from the user perspective and just looking at it from start to finish in one single action. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting piece, right? And I can't I really can't wait for the graphic. <laughs> I'm all excited for it. But um, to me, this is what a lot of people think of as horizontal and well, horizontal end to end testing is what people think of sometimes when they hear end to end. And there really are these two different approaches to it. Um, we'll get to which one's better in a second before everybody questions us. <laughs> but um, they have slightly different uses. Vertical is what a developer thinks of sometimes as end-to-end -end testing, right? This is where we're talking about going not through a workflow, but through an entire stack, right? Hence vertical. People think of it as going through each single layer of the application, UI, API, database, whatever, some security piece, whatever other pieces you have. That's what a lot of people think of as vertical end-to-end -end testing, testing every single piece of a single function. And I think you're right on, Jeff, when you said, I think a lot of people, when they talk about end-to-end -end testing, sometimes they only have in mind horizontal end-to-end -end testing, and they're thinking of the actions that the user is going to go through, which is great, and that's really important. But you also need to, at the same time, wear the other hat and do think about vertically going through the entire stack. And that's why before everyone jumps and asks us which one is better, um, I think you guys are going to see this punchline coming pretty clear. <laughs> is that a punchline? I think so. I don't think it's funny enough to be called a punchline. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But you need both to be successful. You need to be able to think of what are the steps my user is going to go through? What are the actions that they're going to take? But also then going through the test um, and the actual stack and say, are my UI components working? Are my API components working? And all the small tests from unit tests through any other type of larger tests you'll be doing with external applications, database testing, you need all of that to be successful. So it's not just from start to finish of the journey that the user is going to go through, but then it's at each point of that journey, going through the different tests that need to take place in order to make sure that you're successful. And one of the reasons we even had this webinar is because people keep using the phrase end-to-end -end testing. And we're like, great, what do you mean? Because you could be referring to either of these and they are different. Developers tend to think vertically because that's the way the tech works. It goes all the way down, comes back up manual testers, exploratory type testing, um, traditional QA tends to think more along the lines of user stories or horizontal end-to-end -end testing. But actually either of them, if you're only doing one, leaves giant gaps. Um, other people might call vertical end-to-end -end testing true integration testing or even system testing if you do enough of it in a, at a big enough scale. There is a slight difference. Um, we don't need to get into semantics, I guess. So how to perform end-to-end -end testing? Let's go ahead and take an example. Um, and so I think, you know, a lot of people use this example. It's the e-commerce site. And I think all of us experience, um, you know, logging on to a site to purchase something. Uh, I know my go-to and my kryptonite at home is Amazon. Uh, definitely my default. But what are the steps that a user is going to take? We're going to have to update this soon. Now I just yell at my, like, speaker in my house and Alexa? say, buy me a thing. Yeah, man, Alexa has been changing this for me, too. <laughs> orders it in a second. So, but what we do today, because so, sometimes, you know, you just really want that online experience, at least I do for online shopping. Uh, you can go to the website and you're gonna navigate through the website until you find the pricing page. Um, you'll click on your desired items to add to your cart, click checkout. You'll proceed to a payment page where you'll insert all of your user credentials, your payment information, um, your address for shipping and billing. You'll click submit and you'll finalize your purchase. Now that is a ton of steps to go through. Yeah, we're gonna like hammer home to the horizontal versus vertical thing. This is horizontal, right? It's the user story. It's the journey, if you will. 
uh, your marketing, you like the word journey. I do like the, the word the journey. The user journey. Um, <laughs> and then what are the following follow-up steps? steps? Uh, usually a user will receive a thank you email from the vendor with, you know, maybe some description about the product. The user will receive a follow-up email, hopefully with a product to download. Say this is uh, a software you are going to purchase and you'll get your license key. And then hopefully uh, if the marketing team has done okay, they'll usually receive a getting started guide. I love that for e-commerce, we stole ours. You know, <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta plug it when you can. Um, and so with that, you know, Jeff, you mentioned this is a horizontal process, but there are many vertical processes within here too that, you know, sometimes you can't even, a, you don't even realize how many are there. There is here. a ridiculous number, especially these things like payment pages, mm -hmm. user credentials. Um, Follow-up emails. I mean, how many subsystems do we go through when somebody purchases from us just here at SmartBear? Somebody goes and buys QA Complete or Test Complete or SOAP UI or one of our products. We have what, three systems now that get triggered by that purchase? I, at least three, if not more. Right. You have product delivery. You've got the marketing stuff. Mm -hmm. We make sure to put your name Logging on a list it. to make sure somebody calls you. Yep. Uh, now we have a success team that gets alerted. There is mm -hmm. a huge process here. Yeah, and you're spot on. And you have to make sure that that entire chain of processes works. And that's how you're going to be successful with end-to-end -end testing. But how we wanted to do this is we actually wanted to graph it out and show you this example um, on a horizontal and vertical axis and graphic. So, Jeff, you want to you start here? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do like that we labeled the horizontal line horizontal, but it just we had to hammer this home. It was important. <laughs> in, in math class, I was always taught to label my axes. Fair enough. I don't know if you have to if it's actually a vertical line, but sure. <laughs> um, so the intent here is we're going to talk, we just showed you the horizontal story, if you will, right? So vertically, you've got a few layers in here, and we're oversimplifying a little bit. So you have the UI, you know, a nice example here. We're going to talk about the search and find, right? You're typing into a search bar, you're hitting enter, UI stuff. And from there, you're headed over and people are ordering. Now, ordering probably introduces the uh, elements of the database where you actually also want to verify that the order is correct. Um, and there's a whole checkout chain as well. And then that checkout chain really, of course, boils down into a purchase. Now, what's a little hard to show here is that each of these steps, search and find, order, and purchase, actually have this same, if you will, vertical stack above it. If we were to show that, though, it'd get a little crowded. It would look like a giant square. <laughs> so we're taking one kind of snapshot in time on this graphic. But that search and find, that has database pieces. Uh, for instance, uh, Amazon is triggering all sorts of APIs when you do that to give you more things to buy on that page. Advertisements. There's a back end that's keeping track of you as a user so they know everything you thought of a bread. Breath? Not bread. Totally. <laughs> that's a different webinar. Um, <laughs> so um, it's important to kind of keep in mind that this vertical stack is moving along with each horizontal step. Now, do you have to do every layer for every step? No. There is some common sense here, right? You probably don't need to worry as much about database uh, pieces um, post purchase, for instance. Yeah, and someone someone actually asked about, you know, is horizontal end-to-end -end testing all you need for end-to-end -end testing? Um, since you're not really simulating the customer journey, but testing subsystems one by one. And I feel like in that question itself, you kind of combined um, the definition of both horizontal and vertical end-to-end -end testing, because you you did mention that we're, we're talking about the customer journey, but then at each step of the customer journey, testing each subsystem. So really when we are talking about an end-to-end -end testing strategy, uh, we, that does include both horizontal and vertical end-to-end -end testing to be successful. But thank you so much for the question. We'll keep an eye on more questions as they continue to come in. All right, so. So, you know, with that, we, we've, we've hammered in this point. How many more times do we need to say, it's all about your user. You never want your user to notice anything that could go wrong. You never want them to see any hiccups. You want this. You want to have a seamless user experience from start to finish. Navigating through the e-commerce pro process, finding a product they like, clicking on the product, getting the detail, checking out, receiving an email, getting started with the product. 
have the user in mind and make sure that the entire process is seamless from start to finish. Because one thing we definitely want to avoid, uh, this is an image that definitely makes <laughs> me pretty unhappy, um, is- That's the... not actually what happened when our images didn't load. I know, <laughs> no, no, this is what should have happened this, this morning. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, we, we want to avoid Void the 404 page, right? Um, no one wants to see this. No one wants to have this um, be something that shows up. I know if here, if someone logged onto our Smart Bear page and this is the page that showed up, we'd be in a lot of trouble. That is for sure. And so, um, you want to make sure that your UI is not displaying this 404 page, meaning that it's calling um, everything that needs to be called properly from the servers. Everything is stored, entered, encrypted, and saved as necessary. Um, really going back to if your user is experiencing a 404 page, you're probably not having a successful user experience, unfortunately. And so with that, we want to- That sounds strange, but I'm actually gonna throw this in here. It helps sometimes to think of these end-to-end -end tests from a almost marketing point of view, right? We don't just throw Bria on here because she knows what she's talking about. She also knows what she's talking about on marketing, right? That user experience. The user experience isn't the sum of your functionality. It is far, far harder to give a good user experience than it is to simply provide a functioning product. And that experience is really the goal of end-to-end -end testing, no matter which way you're doing it, horizontal, vertical, combining it together, or completely ad hoc, exploratory, let's just give it a shot. You're not testing anymore for functionality. You're testing for experience, which moves it a little bit more from the verification over to the validation side, but um, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm.